Echelon, darling. Keisha. I'm just waiting for a couple more people to come on before I get started. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm sorry I'm dark here as always. I'm outside in Manhattan. I just, I can't stay in the house, y'all. I'm fidgety. I think I got ADD. I got to be outside, so um, hopefully it's not too, too loud. There's some events going on behind me. I heard some music, but um, just bear with me for a second. I'll wait for a couple more people to get on, and then we'll just get started. I don't, hopefully, I don't think this is going to take really long what I have to talk about. Good, Keisha. Glad you tuned in. All right. I'm just going to get started. We'll, uh, we'll let people just trickle in or watch this later. Okay, so, obviously, once again, Man in the Mirror, Chris Adrea. Uh, today's topic is um, name three events that have occurred in your life that were somewhat life-changing, or at least changed the course of your life. So, uh, let me just give you some background on how I even came up with this topic. I was watching something on YouTube, and this question popped up and the guy was having a conversation with a group of people and it got really deep and so once the video was over I uh, kind of reflected on it myself and started giving some thought to it and and I would challenge you to do the same thing because it's amazing when you really sit down and think about some of the events that you think have gotten you to where you are today um, I mean it's pretty powerful it, it, it's pretty powerful because you give you give respect to certain things that have happened to your life and in some cases you think about things that have happened in the negative which has kind of sent you down another road. Either way, we need to put our thoughts on those things because, and anybody who knows me knows I live by this saying, you, you can't change what you don't know. So if you don't recognize it to be an issue, then you can't change it. And if you don't recognizing recognize it to be a blessing, then you can't bless somebody else with it or say thank you or appreciate the moment as it happened okay so my three events um, my first event I'm gonna say happened when I was younger um, there was a situation that occurred when I was uh, a younger guy that went from level one to level 100 very quickly. So much so that it became something that was out of my control. I could not control what happened um, after I somewhat initiated it. Um, I can't talk about it too much. I will tell you that um, the end result of that event is something The, uh, <clears throat> the end result of it is something that I have carried my whole life and uh, I feel a, a, a level of responsibility and guilt for. Um, so why is that important, me to, important for me today? It's important for me today because most things that I have in my life or most things that I do in my life, I have to have control over. Um, and I think it was that moment, it was that situation that dictated everything that happened or how I run, run my life going forward. So I do not like not having control of things, um, at, least, at least to some level. I would tell you sometimes we have to give up control. Uh, vulnerability is necessity, and I'm learning that now. Uh, it, it's sometimes necessary for you to get everything that's, that the world has to offer you. Sometimes you just got to trust. Sometimes you just got to trust that 
you know, if you believe like I do that God's going to take care of you, you've got to trust that somebody's got your back. You've got to trust that people love you and that things are going to work out. Um, and nine times out of ten, even if it doesn't work out, the, the world's not going to end. We just, we create that in our heads. So, again, I say that first event for me was life-changing because um, I've always had a serious problem with feeling like I've been out of control. And quite frankly, probably for the past 10 to 15 years, I have felt an overwhelming feeling of not having control. Um, that's all I'm going to talk about on that one. So, so the, the event in my youth, uh, which got out of control, is the first event that altered my life. Second one, which is much more up, upbeat, um, is the birth of my daughter. And I'll explain that. And, and, and when you guys go through this, don't just... Because I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, Oh, yeah, my the birth of all my children or my wedding. And it it's a cop-out just to say, Hey, my children were born. That changed my life. It, it goes without saying that once you become a parent, your life is forever changed. You, you got to know the deeper rooted reason why that is the case. Why did that change? Now, I just said my daughter. Obviously, I have a son and a daughter. And this is not a slight to my, uh, to my son. My daughter is especially impactful for two reasons. First, obvious, because she's my firstborn. Um, and like anybody who has children, you know life without children and life with a child is completely different. So... They become the first alpha <laughs> test in your life or beta test. And and, um, and so you change. So she's my firstborn, that changed. The second reason is because, and I've said this to any guy who's ever had a daughter. Um, as a man, especially those growing up, I'm going to say in the streets, if you will. Growing up in inner cities and things of that nature where you're taught to be tough and you're taught to stand your ground and show no weakness. Um, your daughter offers you the opportunity to show vulnerability. Your daughter sh offers you the opportunity to be soft and nobody judges you. And I'm saying daughter because if we keep it real, when we're overly sensitive and soft with our sons, that comes with some negative feedback but when it comes to our daughters we can be as soft and vulnerable as we want to be and nobody judge it and, and quite frankly for many of us like me it's the first time you ever get a chance to do that it's the first time you ever get an opportunity to experience um, the complete or giving complete love without the threat or the worry of what somebody's going to say or how they're going to view it or um, or even judging yourself. You know, why am I being a punk? I don't think I ever said that with my daughter. And, 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 and certainly when she was younger, it was a situation I would run home just to get the feeling that she gave me when I came home. Um, now, unfortunately, they grow up and they grow out of that. Um, and then it becomes an awkward feeling for them to be too... Um, affectionate and I'm sure I have something to do with that according to her mother she's got my personality which I guess that's a, a negative thing in some ways but um, I'm trying to change that I'm trying to change that now um, but I, 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 I truly cherish the, the fact that I have been able or I had that period with her um, and, and she was and still is in my heart um, to be able <clears throat> why am I getting all misty uh, to be able to say that's daddy's little girl and uh, there was a, a point I was the corner of the universe for her and I love that it's kind of like not to not not to give a similarity to a dog but if you've ever left the house and come in and see your dog how happy he is even though you've been gone for five minutes um my daughter had that kind of feeling with me, and I, uh, I absolutely loved it. So I'm going to say she changed my life in a lot of ways because going forward, 
obviously it took me a long time to become I'm not 100% there yet I'm sorry there's a garbage truck coming by only because I'm taping um she sorry <laughs> she just allowed me to open up in ways that um, I hadn't done before and then the third event that I'm going to say has altered my life is the most recent one. And that's uh, me going back to school. Um, me going back to school has been extremely impactful for me. Because quite frankly, it's the first time <laughs> in almost my entire life I made a decision that was completely for me. That... I really didn't worry about whether or not it was going to upset people, even though I knew it was. Um, it made me happy. I had a sense of accomplishment. I knew it was going to be hard, and I didn't let that scare me away. Um, I'm not even close to finish yet, but I feel so much better about myself as I push through it. Um, yeah, I'm offering this because I think people have some, some similar feelings, and I'm saying go for it. I'm, I'm saying put yourself in the situation make the decision everybody's not going to like what you do trust me everybody's not going to like what you do I cannot believe this truck came as soon as I started talking but at any rate um, you spend a lot of your time trying to impress or trying to gain favor from people you want people to be proud of you and stuff like that but the reality is, you got to make yourself proud of yourself. Trust me. <laughs> because, quite frankly, no matter what you do, sometimes you're not going to make people proud of you. And in other cases, no matter what you do, people don't even recognize what you're doing. And part of that is because you're really doing it for yourself. It just takes you some time to realize it. Um, you, you've you've got to... You just got to push forward... And do whatever it takes for you to be able to look in the mirror and say, you know what, good job. Even if nobody else will ever know how hard it was, even if nobody ever will know what you've had to go through to get to where you are, or what you've had to sacrifice, or, you know, the prayers, the crying in the pillow, whatever your thing is, whatever you've had to do, some people will never know that. Seriously? <laughs> um... But you know it. And that's what makes makes it that much sweeter on the other end. I'm going to cut this short because this obviously, this was quite a second go. God, New York, I love you. In any rate. <laughs> um, as I said in the beginning, I challenge you to think about what are three events in your life that have impacted you and then really think about why why has it impacted you how has that changed for the better or for the worse um, I think the controlling thing for me is a problem but I recognize it now so it's something that I work on on a daily basis sometimes I just gotta let things go and say it ain't that serious um, even recognizing what, what the vulnerability with my daughter has done for me if I allow myself to forget that then I'll slide back into what I used to do. If I remind myself of the feeling and, I mean, in a large way, the empowerment of being able to allow yourself to be vulnerable, you block a lot of blessings when you don't allow yourself to be vulnerable. That's, that's the catch-22. We always think we're protecting ourselves, and maybe you are to a certain degree, but you're also blocking a lot of stuff that would be coming in if... Uh, if you weren't so guarded. And then lastly, I, I can't even put into words what I've gained by going back to school and pursuing something that is probably the hardest thing I've ever pursued at such a late time in life. I'm in class with kids who are younger than my children. Um, and sometimes that's funny and sometimes I don't understand what the hell they're saying and sometimes I'm a father figure and sometimes, but it's all life lessons. It's all life lessons. But I, I continue to impress myself because I go into everything and the bar is really high. And I've met and quite frankly, almost every time exceeded the bar. 
I'm not just talking about grades. I've done well in grades as well, but I'm just talking about, you know, I haven't felt like this since pledging. <laughs> you know, when you say to yourself, there's no way I can do it, and you keep finding a way to get it done. Um, believe me, if other people have done it, you can do it. No matter what that thing is, you can do it. You just got to push forward. Block out all the negative conversations that go in your head. Um, I was having negative conversations today as I start to fill out applications for nursing school. Um, this is a conspiracy. Um, as I was... Uh, filling out applications today I promise this is the last time I'm doing this outside because it ain't working um cause I'm thinking oh this school is so expensive or this school has such high grades they're gonna look at my undergrad from, from Towson and they're gonna be like oh hell no I don't care what you've been doing right now we looking at these grades from Towson and uh not impressive um and then I had to have a side conversation with myself and say, Chris, even if they don't accept you, so what? How many schools are there in the country? I mean, even if you don't get into the school that you want to get into, there's other schools. Here's what I'm saying. I know no matter what, I'm going to be an RN at the end of this. Now, whether or not that's a year and a half from now or I'm 75, I made a promise to myself I have my kids watching me. I put it out there to you guys. So not doing it is absolutely not an option. It's just not an option. So it's going to happen. Obviously, I, I'm hoping it happens early, sooner than later. But, um, you know, we do what we can and we push forward. Take your lumps. And Lord knows I've had a lot of lumps. A lot of lumps. But I ain't broken. You know, I ain't broken. Anyway, please think about the three events. Um, feel free, if you can, post some of them um, because I think other people, we learn from each other. If there are things that, that, that you recognize, please share. Uh, otherwise, you know, go through the lesson and see what you get out of it. Anyway, this is your boy, Chris, man in the mirror. As always, one love.